I personally find this legendary unicorn car from Gran Turismo's history, which of course has finally returned, the Nissan R30 Generation Skyline in Super Silhouette form, or the Super Silhouette formula, as I believe it used to be called in Gran Turismo 2. I think this is a great car to have, and for many of us it's probably the standout of the three from GT Sport's 1.19 July update. The thing that I find curious about this car though, is it's vehicles like this, and like the Escudo as well, which are a little bit contradictory to some of the other aspects of GT7. And it's contradictory in a bit of a good way, because with GT7 there are plenty of things to complain about. There were plenty of things, especially later on, to complain about in GT Sport as well, but it's cars like this that show that at least some people on the team, probably at some kind of high level, I wouldn't necessarily say Kaz himself, but maybe, who knows, do care about the history of the series, do care about what the fans want, and do believe in correctly weaponizing nostalgia, because that can be a good thing to do. Nostalgia can be great when used correctly, not to cover over problems, but to provide something that people want, people miss, people do have that connection to, but in a way that feels justified and useful. This car is certainly useful in the game, despite it being strangely in Group 3, at least initially, but it is a really good car. That counteracts some of the other things in GT7 that don't make as much sense. Some of the things that are maybe more of the corporate side, maybe more of the Sony side, like the microtransactions and stuff like that, or even the nature of the patches and updates themselves, and although it's almost impossible unless you're on the inside or know somebody who is at Polyphony to know who exactly is pushing which choices, which decisions, etc. It's cars like this, the Escudo and others too, which show that as I said, at least some element of care for the community is there. Now with that in mind, as I said, this car is a pleasure, simply put, to work with. It's a car which I, I had kind of measured expectations for, because it could have been really good, but it could also be one of those cars that just doesn't live up to its legacy at all, because totally different console, in fact a couple of consoles removed from the last time when we saw this car, and there are tons of cars on older games which just don't cut it, in the way that they used to. So for me, for example, I think if uh, something like a Pescarolo were brought back, sure it would be great, but something tells me it wouldn't necessarily be as dominant as it was in Gran Turismo 4, 5 and 6. This could have happened to, well, the Nissan as well. It hasn't though. The specs are good and the performance can match those. The weight in particular is nice and low, at 1,005 kilos, so barely a metric ton, combined with 561 horsepower, so it's not breaking the bank in terms of power, but the weight is a good 150, 200, sometimes more kilos lighter than many other cars in that kind of class, and the performance points within Group 3 are 728. That makes sense. It's not crazy high, it's about what you'd expect, and you could potentially use this car to, for example, race at Le Mans, earn some cash, race in any kind of Group 3 event, of course, because it's eligible for that. And if you do want to use this car as often as possible, it's not going to disappoint you, I don't think. Because as I touched on in my review for 1.19 overall, this car is a pleasure to work with. In fact, it's a lot less Larry, in particular, than I thought it was going to be especially not having the all-wheel drive advantage of a Skyline in its typical GTR road-going form, that could have upset the Apple car and made it a car that just feels super twitchy, old school in the worst ways, and maybe just a, a completely unforgiving beast. Something like a vintage Grand Prix car would feel like, for example. It doesn't. It's really good. The sheer amount of downforce, of course, is contributing to that, the completely different aero profile, the much wider track, the significantly lower center of gravity. It's just a lovely car, simply put. It handles much like a touring car, especially like the DTM cars in like Gran Turismo 4 and 5 used to feel, but faster than those, lighter, more responsive. It has a lovely personality, this car, and I've always liked the R30 generation Skylines anyway, and the R31 as well. This, I think, lives up to the legacy of those sometimes undervalued models 
to a degree that any fan of them should be proud of. It's a fantastic canvas to work from. I've seen some great canvases in the discovery section of the game. The obvious stuff like Pennzoil, you've got the blue livery that I use for the review. But then you've got stuff like people who have made like Amazon boxes into a fake wide body kit on it. You know, like a cheap looking body kit, as if it were a ricer car. And of course many ricer cars were inspired by these formula silhouette machines. It's a car that inherently appeals, you could say technically, to a deeper, more hardcore fandom than even something like the Escudo would, because this is a deeper cut in the series. This would be like a, a Tavon Trampio Mitsubishi FTO coming back, or a Chrysler PT Spider, or something super, super obscure, uh, a Lotus Esprit GT1, these cars that are no way near as well known to the majority of Gran Turismo players, and not as obvious as something like an Escudo. And of course Gran Turismo 2 had a ton of those. In terms of its usability, as I said, it's great to work with no matter what kind of tuning level, power level, weight level. As far as balance of performance, that has been readjusted with the 1.19 patch, and I've heard good things from a lot of people. They're happy, for the most part, with how that's been implemented, at least from what I've seen. So, for an older car, it certainly seems as well from the chatter I saw in comments that people overall are pretty damn happy with this car and its implementation. I think it's kind of ended up being the star of the show for this update because I know a ton of people were looking forward to it, but I would have thought even more people were looking forward to the Porsche. The Porsche not being as good or as implemented correctly, more accurately, as I said in its review, probably contributes to that. But this really is the Escudo of this pack. It's that super legendary, extreme monster of a car. But unlike the Escudo, actually makes a bit more sense to go up against other race cars. It's still out of time to some degree, that old school appeal, completely different rulebook, but it's closer to other things in the game than the Escudo. I mean, the Escudo is extreme even by Pikes Peak standards. It's a crazy car. This one, I think it fits right back at home, and it's almost like it never left. It's lovely to see them in, in, implement a car like this back again, and I'm glad that they did. So that's it for my thoughts on the Super Silhouette Skyline. Tell me yours down below. Do you love the car? Were you maybe disappointed by it? Perhaps some people are. And what other cars like this would you love to see come back? Of course, we already saw the leaked data mining list. Some returning faces, some debuts. But if you had the choice of what other, you know, deep cut cars you would want to see come back, such as some of the ones that I mentioned, which of those would be the ones for you? There's a lot, especially in the Gran Turismo 2 days, to choose from. There are loads of those weird and wacky cars, so which ones would you pick to bring back if you could? in the vein and in the style of stuff like this and the Suzuki. Overall though, that's it for this vid, but for now, as always, thanks for watching.